Yo, what's happening? Um, I'm looking here at the vocab list, so I figure what I could do is I'm just going to go over it. I just have them right here. I'm going to read them because maybe that'll help you out um, just a little bit more in detail. So here we go. Um, this is the AP Stats Summer Work. Um, greetings. Welcome to AP Stats. You got a bunch of stuff to do. Have a good summer. Here it is. Um, watch some videos. There's like six or seven videos on APStatsGuy.com. And then we're going to go, as you know, we're going to go through this list. I hope your teacher quizzes you on all 58 of these. I actually made a new list, but then I re read the old one. I'm like, it ain't that bad. So here we go. One, what is statistics? Statistics is the study of variability. I got that from Dave Bach. He writes the textbook that I use. Um, it's a great, great textbook. Um, and he's, he described it as just everything changes and statisticians watch it. So the world changes. So really we study how things are different, how things vary. Variability is what makes the world interesting, right? If everybody was the same, yes, uh, yes, it would be boring. So statistics, we kind of look at how things vary. What is variability? Well, variability is differences. Like we're all different sizes. We have different interests. Um, there's different types of trees. Uh, there's different sizes of trees, five sizes of fish. There's different types of well, if you have, I mean, with this, there's different types of viruses. There's different types of everything varies. I mean, there's there's different ways to get hit by a pineapple. You know, at, the whole world is weird, and that's what makes it so interesting. So all of that variability, all those weird ways that things can happen, and all that stuff. That's 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 what we do. We study uh, study data, really, the raw stuff, and look at it. Um, what are the two branches of of stats in this course? We talk about inferential and descriptive. Descriptive is literally just like when you take a sample or you gather data, you just look at it, you're like, oh, look what I got. Hey, dude, here's what I got. It's you showing people what you got. You're describing the things you have. Inferential is when you gather a sample and then you um, use the, the information in that to make an inference about what's happening to, in the whole world. Okay, that's inferential. Um, what are descriptive stats? I already talked about it. Okay, compare descriptive to inferential. I just did that. What is data? Data is the raw stuff. So like eye color. So here's data if you're talking about eye color. Brown, brown, blue, green, brown, brown. You know, that's those things, are, that, that's the raw data, okay? But a statistic would be like, the, like what's the most, like if you have a group of people, like what's the mode? Like, or what percent, if I want to know the percent of your sample um, that has brown eyes, you might say 67% of my sample has brown eyes. That's 67% is a statistic the data is the actual eye color or if you say the average age of people in my class is 16.8 that average age is the statistic the data is each individual age so data is like the one number you take from from one one source like basically one part of your sample one element of the set Ooh, element um, a sample is the small thing you take out of the population. The population is generally the thing you're interested in. So if you're interested in, you know, um, you know Frosties at Wendy's and what's the average volume of a junior Frosty, then all junior Frosties uh, at Wendy's is your population of interest. And then just the ones you snag and, and, and calculate the volume, that'll be your sample. Um, if you're wondering the volume itself, the so, your population are the Frosties, right? The parameter you're interested in is the volume of, fr of Frosty, or the average volume of a Frosty. So we'll say, if I say, what population are you interested in? You're like, all Frosties. Well, what's the parameter of interest? The volume, average volume of all Frosties. Well, what's your sample? These Frosties. What's your statistic? The average volume of these Frosties. And you can never get the actual average volume of all Frosties because they're making them all the time. Um, what is the parameter we're talking about? Okay. Um, we're curious about the average wait time at Dunkin' Donuts drive through in your neighborhood. You randomly sample cars one afternoon and find the average wait time is 3.2 minutes. What's the population parameter? So what's the thing you're interested in? The average wait time of all cars at that drive through right? Um, at, at this certain drive through in your neighborhood. Uh, what's the statistic? 3.2 minutes is the statistic. So the parameter you're interested in is the uh, true average wait time. The parameter of interest is just the wait time, okay? 
um, is, is just of, of all, you know, but the actual average wait time. So uh, it's important what's the data each individual wait time. Um, compare data statistic to parameter using a categorical variable. So uh, if I'm going to use categorical variable, you could use like, you know, what's your favorite type of food? And that's the question. The data would be, um, you know, like if you're doing meal pet preference, it would be this guy like tacos, tacos, pizza, taco, burger, burger, taco. That's data. Um, the statistics um, and the parameters would be summary. So statistic would be the percent of people who like tacos in your sample. That's the statistic. And the percent of people in the population that you're interested in that like tacos, that's the parameter. Okay, The data is just the individual person's um, preference. Compare data, statistic, and parameter using quantitative. So the difference between quantitative and qualitative um, or categorical, categorical is like categories, like eye color, music preference, sexual preference, um, what else you, like different things like that, or color of your favorite shirt or your favorite color or the type of car you drive. Um, where quantitative is stuff like um, your weight, your height, um, the weight of a fish, the volume of this uh, pool over here, or you know, all, anything that can be measured, right? Um, with, with numbers, quantity, quantity, quality is usually reported out in percents. Quantity is reported out, reported out in averages or means, right? Um, so if you can take the average of this data, then it's it's uh, quantitative. If you're taking a percent, it's it's uh, categorical. Um, what is a census when you at when you some can get a hold of all the things you're interested in? So if you're ordering uh, if you're ordering out at a you know a food joint and you you have a family of eight, you're gonna take a census. You're gonna have to find out. Suppose you're getting sandwiches, you're gonna ask every individual what kind of sandwich they want. That would be a census census but um, you know the US census they try to do it they don't get to everybody in the US because it's impossible like some things are impossible you couldn't take the average weight of a human on earth today because tomorrow everybody weighs a little bit more right you know some people ate some people went to the bathroom I mean you know your weight changes right so you could never get those things it's weird um, what is the difference between a parameter and that man I asked you the same question so many times hopefully all right you take a random sample of 20 hamburgers from five guys and count the number of pickles on a bunch of them and one of them had nine pickles that number nine from the burger would be called data that's a datum okay that individual one is a datum data is like a summary of it you know you call it a data value but it's a datum so that, that one single number is data if you take a random sample of 20 hamburgers from five guys and count the number of pickles on a bunch of them, then the average number of pickles, was, and you find the average number of pickles was 9.5 pickles, then 9.5 would be a statistic because it's a summary of a sample, the ones you collected, right? You didn't get the pop, you, there's no way you can get all the five guys' burgers. Some of them have been made. And the other thing, like, if you really want to take a census of people, by the time you ask everybody something, right, some of the people have... have, have passed away and some were born right populations are always changing if you take a random sample of 20 hamburgers from five guys and count the number of pickles on a bunch of them and I do this because I want to know the true average number of pickles on a burger at all five guys the true average number of pickles is considered a parameter or the parameter of interest I want to know hey how many pickles does five guys have that's that's what I want to know right uh, my population is all burgers right at five guys my parameter of interest is the average number of pickles, and then I take a sample, and the average number of pickles in my sample is called the statistic. The number of pickles on any individual burger is data. Data. What's the difference between a sample and a census? Sam uh, samples of little few people. Census, yes, all the people. All right. Use all the following words in one sentence, the golden sentence. I was curious about the population parameter. But a census was too costly, so I decided to choose a sample, collect some data, calculate a statistic, and use that statistic to make an inference about the population parameter. Whew, that was a lot. All right, sorry about that. I'm torturing you guys, but I love you. If you're tasting soup, then the flavor of this number 26, the flavor of each individual thing in the spoon, each individual thing, the individual thing is the data. The entire spoon is the sample, but the flavor of all that stuff is the statistic, and you use that statistic about the flavor of the entire, use that statistic, you also use that to make an inference about the flavor of the entire pot of soup, which would be called the parameter. What are random variables? Um, if you randomly choose, like, fish, the weight of each fish is a, is a random variable. Um, they're things that are, cho they're, they're qualities of things that are chosen randomly. Like eye color of a bunch of people is a, is a random variable. 
what's like if you're picking like uh, pennies out of a jar, random, random bunch of pennies, uh, the, the date of each penny uh, is, a, is a random variable. What's the difference, you know, if you're spinning a spinner and it lands on like red, blue, or green, uh, each one of those is a, is a, that's a every, every spin, the outcome is a random variable. What's the difference between quantitative and categorical? Check, talked about it, quantity versus category. Quantitative, you can find the average of the stuff. Categories usually report out in percents. What's the difference between quantitative and categorical data? Oh, that's cool. Okay, so, you know, the, the statistics or the, or the, or the, the, the quantitative stats and quantitative parameters usually get uh, reported out in means or modes or medians, right? Um, but qua uh, categorical stuff gets reported out in percents usually, okay? But the data, generally, the data, if, if it's categorical, the data, the raw data are words, like yes, no, yes, yes, no, yes, yes, no, or uh, colors, red, blue, red, blue, or whatever. But quantitative, the raw data are numbers, okay? That's another way to think, the raw data. What's the difference between discrete and continuous? Like discrete is like there's like there's like space between them. They're not on a continuum. Like shoe size, eight, eight and a half, nine. Um, if you report your age in years, um, although that's a continuous, uh, that's a continuous variable. That's that's continuous, uh, uh, but it's no one reports out there. How old are you? Fourteen point two eight three, right? You're fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So your age in whole years would be discrete. Now uh, continuous. Um, like there's a whole course of mathematics, a whole branch of math called discrete math, and all of the answers are just integers, no fractions, no decimals. I know some of you are like, yay! But then you take the class, you're like, no! It's not that easy. Um, but continuous is like, you know, like fractions, decimals, and percents are on a continuum. Like the number line is a whole, like there's no spaces between the numbers on a number line. That's why you draw a line. It's a continuous line. Weights, heights, uh, things like that. Um, what's the difference between talk about it? What's a quant talked about? It. What's a cat talked about it? See ya. What do we sometimes call a category? Some people call a categorical variable qualitative. That's qualitative because it talks about the qualities of the variable. What's quantitative data numbers? What's categorical? The actual individual category, like blue or female, that's the data. So the data would be female, male, female, male. Okay. Um, or gender neutral, sorry, okay. Um, what's categorical uh, data would be like um, uh, country music, uh, pop music, uh, hip hop. What's frequency is just how often something comes up, right? You know, um, so if you're taking, you know, people are walking by and you're keeping track of how many people are wearing hats, be like four, you can tally them up five, six. Data or datum. Data is plural. Datum is one. So when people are like, dude, don't be a statistic. That's you. You couldn't be the average of a sample, or you couldn't be the summary of a sample. You're just one person. So they should say, don't be a datum. What is a frequent? I got that from Dave Bach. Is what is a frequency distribution? It's just a table or a chart or a picture that's showing. Um, how often certain values come up. There's a video on it, but think of like a, a, a histi well, histogram, I and mean, even a, a bar chart could be considered a frequency, how often things pop up in certain categories. What's meant by relative frequency? Well, relative anything. It's like, what's the relative this? You always are relating that number to something else. In this case, we talk about relative, you know, people are like, oh, everything's relative, and, and things are. Like, your, the, your speed is relative. Like, right now, it looks like I'm standing still, but relative to like, things in outer space or um, the center, I, I, I'm moving at a thousand, we, like if you're at the equator, you're spinning around the earth at a thousand miles an hour, right? So relative to other things you're moving, but like me relative to the plant behind me is, is I'm moving zero, right? We're both like, if this is like my point of reference, right? So when we talk about relative stuff, I thought with the earth, the circumference of the earth is 24,000 miles and we, every 24 hours we go around and that's how it's about a thousand miles an hour. Um, so in, rel in, this, in this course, relative is like related to the whole. So like when you, when you spit the frequency out, it's like nine. But if it's relative frequency, you'd be like 27%. Okay, if, if that nine represented 27% of the whole. Because you always re you relate, we relate things to other things to make more sense of the numbers, right? Um, if someone's like, dude, only nine people in that town got COVID. And you're like, well, how many people in that town? And they were like, nine. Like, holy cow, right? 
hundred percent. But someone could report out hundred percent of the people in the town got COVID. You'd be like, oh my God, how many people were there? It'd be nine. You'd be like, oh, I mean, not not that it, it's good, but it's you know puts things into into perspective. Um, I have no idea what number I was on. Uh, oh, here we are. Make it get. Oh, okay. So that's what relative cumulative frequency is like the adding up. So like if Monday I had one, then Tuesday I had two, I'd be up to three. It's like the total count so far. And then relative cumulative, a cumulative relative is just a, a percent so far. What's the difference between a bar chart and a histogram? Bar charts are usually are categories. And a histogram is like numbers on a continuum. So if you take the age of people, they have an order from left to right. A bar chart, you can usually shuffle them, shuffle them around. When you draw, when you're drawing them, often the bar chart has little spaces between the bars and a histogram you're touching. Um, what's the mean? It's the average. Okay. Um, what's the difference between a population mean and a sample mean? Uh, population mean, the mean of a population is called a parameter, and the mean of a sample is called a statistic. What symbols do we use for population mean? Oh, the symbol we use for the population mean is like a is a fancy M. It's called a mu. It looks like a lowercase u. It looks like me. So you're like it's it's like part M and part U. It's like mu. And the symbol we use for the mean of a sample is an X with a bar over it. I forgot I even had I haven't read these in so long. I haven't taught I didn't teach stats in a little bit, but I'm back. I'm back on the stats set. <laughs> Back in the stat saddle again. Um, what's the difference between the pot? Oh, it said it. What's uh, said it? How can you think about the mean and median to remember the difference when looking at a histogram? There's a whole video of that. But the mean is the balancing point. The average is where that histogram, if they were like stacks of quarters or stacks of blocks, it's will balance them. The median is just half, half the stuff, half the area across. Okay, so the median splits the area in the half, but the mean is the balancing point. What's the mode? It's the peak. The peaks. What happens the most? Oh, there's a lot of stuff happening here and here. Those are the modes. Okay, if there's two modes, we call it bimodal, one mode, unimodal. More than two, multimodal. Um, when do we often use mode? We use mode when we're dealing with uh, categorical stuff, like the like what most students like, country music. We say that would be the mode. Why don't we always use the mean? Because um, it's not resilient. Like, if I have a some data and I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, three is the median. And if I do a typo by accident, I write one, two, three, four, five hundred. Well, three is the mean of one, two, three, four, five, and it's the median of one, two, three, four, five. If I do one, two, three, four, five hundred, three is the median of one, two, three, four, five hundred. But the mean of one, two, three, four, five hundred is like a hundred. Like the mean is gets is very it's not resilient it's in very inf it's easily influenced by outliers typos and um, odd stuff um, why don't we uh, when we say the average teenager what are we talking about when you use the word average you could be talking about the mean the median or the mode um, an example um, there's a good example on here but you could use any example a clear example when the mean would change but the median wouldn't you could use any data set and just multiply the last number by a hundred in the middle the, the guy in the middle is always gonna you know you can mess around with these things so you can be like one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five billion. The median of those two sets are the same, but the mean of the one, two, three, four, five billion goes up to one billion, right? So if you like, you want to describe the average, you know, salary of the people in your house, and one guy makes one dollar, another guy makes two, another makes three, another makes four, another makes five billion. I mean, most people are making like one, like three bucks. It's probably a better description of what people are making. The five billion guy makes it look like everyone's making one billion. The dude who like makes a dollar is like, yo, what's that? How are mean, medium mode position on a skewed left diagram? Okay, skewed left means the skew or the tail is over to the left. Um, so I guess you're looking at me, it would be that way. Um, and what happens is the, the mean goes out, the mean goes out and chases it, okay? So it actually goes mean, medium mode in that order. If it's skewed right, it goes mode, medium, mean. Who chases the tail? The mean goes after the tail and outliers. So we say the mean, the mean chases the tail, the mean chases the tail, I hold the Dario, the mean chases the tail. All right, that's it guys. Hopefully that little review helped you on the vocab test. You're gonna be asked some of those questions, no other questions. Um, and I hope you do great. And I hope you enjoy this course. Have a great day. I'm out of here.